11 o'clock. Yeah. Y'all please uh, call the meeting in order. Please stand and join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, please join me uh, in a brief moment of silence for all of our uh, first responders and uh, men and women in the armed forces who are protecting us, both uh, domestic and abroad. Thank you. <laughs> Entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the December 2nd meeting. So okay. Motion by Legislator Klein, second by Legislator Trudell. Any additions, deletions, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say it's approved. First resolution, uh, PS1, appointing members to the Soto County Fire Advisory Board. Entertain a motion for that by Legislator Emmons, second by Legislator Chesborough. Any questions? Uh, Don, could you refresh your memory? There are a few openings on this uh, still. Yep. Are, you, are you looking for members? Um, and if so, we can had, you um, briefly tell the towns that encompass those districts? We actually had two that just dropped off okay. um, in December. Okay. So um, we're looking for replacements for them. Um, one of the districts is Sandy Creek, Wilcona. Uh, Redfield, that area. The other one is Central Square, Cloud North. Um, we also had one on Williamson. So, got one um, interested party. So, I'm going to bring it up in our next meeting uh, to fill one of them, and we're still actively looking for somebody to fill the other. Okay. That, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. Next one is a resolution appointing members to the EMS Advisory Council, MSAC for 2020. Motion by Legislator Klein, second by Legislator Chesbrough. Any questions? I did uh, just want to note that the uh, chair of this uh, board has reached out to me to uh, meet and discuss uh, some of the EMS issues that we have in the county. And I will take him up on that at a later point in time. And he has also uh, started to forward some minutes along to us um, and promised that he will continue to do that. Uh, so we actually have advisory boards that are uh, um, advising us on certain situations. So uh, if there is nothing else, all in favor say aye. All right. Any opposed? Approved. Uh, next resolution, PS3, is establishing a uh, salary for the ADA position. Um, the, uh, the district attorney has uh, found two highly qualified individuals to fill the uh, positions that we uh, uh, have put into the 2020 budget for the ADA positions, um, starting salary at $82,305. Um, we retain a motion on that from Legislator Emmons, second by Legislator uh, Mangano. Um, questions? Legislator Klein? Sorry, Greg, I couldn't talk to you the other day. I'm out in the middle of a field, probably a thousand yards from where I live, and I don't have my book with me. But we're here today. And this is something, and the reason I didn't call you back is the whole committee should hear this. Okay. Okay, this is a committee, and the committee makes decisions on these things, not just one individual. Uh, here, it, let me go back. November 4th, and then it was resumed in November 7th, was mostly dedicated to discussing budget matters. And going through that paperwork, I don't see any discussion from you saying that the budget's not right. Now I assume, and I can only assume this, that I don't sit with you folks like that, that's that man's job, but I'm going to understand it the best I can that apparently this budget was approved by you and him, correct? All right. Now, You've got in here that in these positions were uh, established here at 68, 839. There was three of them. There's two of them you want to move. But that's, that's your right. You've got here in your in this sheet of paper here with all your requests that you have found a ADA in another county that is prosecuted, is experienced, uh, on and on. That, that, and that's fine. Um, my question that always comes into mind because I was an employer and played a lot of people during my career. Why, and I don't need an answer to this, 
But you always got to put in the back of your mind, why is this person leading that? Why are they leading that position? And the trouble is with an old horse is it's hard to train a new horse to be like you or Mark Moody. When you get somebody that's brand new out of school like that, I understand there's a learning. <coughs> I understand that 100%. But between the experience you have and Mark has and a few of the other people you have in your audience, you can train somebody new that will be like your thinking and like how you want to be presented like that. An old horse will still do the same thing. They're going to run to the side one way or the other. It's just the way it is. Um, and how long before this person becomes dissatisfied who work in our county? Because obviously we don't give out money like other counties. We don't have it. Um, I, I, I just don't understand why this is coming up now. You say you have somebody good like that. We established these salaries. This man came to us with a budget. We okayed that budget. Now you're back here again looking for quite a lot more money. And, and Greg, I love you to death. You know that. I'll carry your petition. I speak very highly because as a human being, you're a good human being. I'm not done yet. You're a human being. But the point is this, Greg. This isn't the first time that you've come to us with want more money for these people. I mean, this is reoccurring, reoccurring, reoccurring. If I may, Richard, um, hold, hold on one second. Sure. The county administrator wants to go, and sure. then we'll go to you. Absolutely. One of the reasons that these, these two salaries are budgeted, I think, probably at 68, is that when this county has a vacancy or creates a new position, it is budgeted at uh, the lowest end of the range. Uh, not knowing what a person is going to come in and ask for. So that's why it's budgeted at 68, which is the lowest end of the range for that grade level for an attorney. We know that they may come in uh, and uh, there may have to be some negotiation, but usually that gets paid for because the, the job or the position is vacant for a while. Mm -hmm. This is the case here. What each, each position line in the budget is in the budget. But that's not a line that we draw money out of. The, money, the line we draw money out of is the, is the total line of the 5110 level. And so that's why vacancies can sometimes cover uh, if you have to hire somebody in who's got experience and things of that nature. So um, that's a short explanation as to why it was budgeted at 68. And we, we have always budgeted at the low, low end of the scale when there's a vacancy or when there is a uh, new, new position created. We right. don't want to telegraph to a new person mm -hmm. that, hey, maybe we'll go another 20000 Greg, no, I appreciate it, sir. And, you know, these two individuals reached out to me. Uh, they are currently in the DA's office right now. Uh, I talked to them about why they would be looking to make the switch here. Um, they are not the only attorneys to leave that particular office. In fact, that office has seen a number of people leave in the last couple of months for a variety of reasons. Um, but approached me with the idea of they heard I run a good office, that I'm supportive of my staff, um, and that basically be, I treat my employees appropriately. Um, through word of mouth, I have a good reputation. Um, the county has a good reputation. Um, I talked to them about coming up here and what their job would entail. Uh, these are experienced attorneys who haven't seen a town court for a handful of years, They're more experienced than doing felonies. But I explained to them that. Due to the changes in the law, that everybody's pitching in and covering town courts, including my senior staff and myself, uh, that we'll be covering cap court, which is the new court that got established on January 2nd, and what that would entail. Um, put it all out there. You still want to come aboard, knowing what it entails. Um, when we talked about salary, one thing he said is they simply can't take a pay cut from where they're at now. Um, so I can't legally require. Uh, what their salary is. And I said, you know, what are you looking for? Well, I need to have something that's commensurate with my salary. So well, I can't ask you. So you tell me, what's the salary you need? And this is the stuff that lines up most closely with the stuff that they're already at in the office that they're at now. Um, I can tell you, I've spoken to other prosecutors that I know in their office. I've spoken to defense attorneys, uh, judges in that county. Both of them enjoy a sterling reputation. I was told without equivocation I'd be lucky to have them. So you know, I'm asking for the support of the committee so we can get the people here 
that we need to be able to do discovery, we need bail obligations, we need cap court, um, significantly all of our obligations. Because unfortunately, you guys would like me to reduce your applicants, but there are no other applicants. Um, these, these are the two applicants. Quite literally, I have extended offers to three other people, um, two of whom had accepted and then called to say they had second thoughts because of the court requirements, cap court requirements. They decided otherwise and rejected what they had accepted. Um, these two people reached out to me. Quite honestly, if I don't hire them, I don't really want them to have some of those positions. That's the end of the day, puts the community at risk. All right, great. One more question then. Uh, you have in this line number, it doesn't matter what line number, uh, there's three more attorneys in there that you have or district attorneys uh, assistant. For set once for 73,063 and two others for 70,920. Uh, how is this going to reflect with these allegedly two new people? Um, yeah, I talked with the staff. I didn't tell them the exact salary, but uh, the lower end people that you're referring to are individuals that joined our office either at the beginning of last year or midway through 2018. Again, they're a year to a year and a half in the practicing as attorneys. And both of the kids I'm looking at have been practicing prosecutors for several years. So the pay is commensurate with their experience and their ability. I'm glad you're in the office, not me. Can I address this for a second? Uh, Greg and I have not had a conversation about this, but I can tell you this, I, I worked in that prosecutor's office for 10 years, so it's a small community. Of course, these people reached out to me to find out about this, and I can tell you, salary discussion aside, that's none of my business, but I can tell you the two prosecutors that he's, he was speaking to about are excellent at their job, the end sheriff and myself have worked with them for, I was there for 10 years, and uh, they're excellent prosecutors, and again, I agree that we'd be lucky to have them here. Uh, and, and, uh, there's no comment on salary. I'm not going to discuss that. That's not my business. But their work ethic and their abilities would be great to have in this county. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Any not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next resolution is establishing salary for the road patrol lieutenant. And then we had a uh, retirement and uh, we're looking to uh, move somebody up from the end of the department. Uh, and set the salary at 85407. Do I have a motion on this? Motion by Legislator Emmons, second by Legislator Becco. Questions? There are none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed? Any opposed? Thank you. The next resolution is a budget modification to accept a grant for the um, hazardous materials emergency planning grant um, in the amount of $5,172. Motion by Legislator Chesborough, second by Legislator Trudell. Any questions, debate? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approve. Make sure you sign the budget modification. Uh, next, we have some appointments to the Community Safety Initiative Committee. Um, please note there is one addition. That's Tom Jennings, who is the superintendent of the Pulaski uh, uh, Central Schools District. Um, I will enter uh, a motion by okay. Legislator Greco, second by Legislator uh, Mangano. I call him Mangano, or Cornelius Mangano, or what they call him. <laughs> Legislator Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just want to make sure I get it right at least once. <laughs> <laughs> By December, I'm really getting it right. Okay? <laughs> um, any questions on that? So, uh, just so you know, um, this group has been working uh, diligently on, uh, on a number of aspects throughout the county. Um, I think all the department heads who have been involved in this task as well, we have accomplished a lot. Um, particularly getting school resource officers in the uh, school districts. Um, and we're just the amount we've accomplished is unbelievable. And to uh, be able to add a uh, school superintendent to there, I think that'll be a, a great asset. Uh, anything else? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it's approved. Next, I'd like to go into reports. Number one. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, start off real quick, just go down through a couple uh, items on the December 2019 report and then uh, just uh, talk to the 2019 year end report. Uh, for December, um, we had uh, about average 911 call, um, 911 wireline call, calls answered, um, wireless calls answered was up a little bit, um, largely because we you know, uh, didn't have a lot of snow events back on the so. Um, we were back around 81.82% uh, for emergency calls answered within 10 seconds. And uh, for people that are new to the committee, um, the standard on that with the National Emergency Number Association is uh, to be uh, have 90% of your calls answered within 10 seconds. And uh, we definitely strive to do that. That is a direct correlation with the amount of staffing. And uh, we are doing training during the month of uh, December cross-training some uh, fire dispatchers with some law dispatchers, which shortens us up even more than normal, but uh, you'll see when we get to the uh, 2019 year total, uh, we're still in the same range. So, um, Something else of uh, note is requests for information. There was 451 requests for recorded audio files for stat reports in December. I, I average, we see about 17. We had, two thousand, or sorry, had 204 between January 2019 and the end of November 2019. And just in December alone, because the automatic discovery laws and ramping up, getting everything ready to go, we had 451. And that was prior to us putting on the new data analysts that we uh, created in this year's budget. So December was very, very busy for the office. Um, the biggest thing really of note activity is uh, bringing um, uh, we did bring McPhee Ambulance onto the mobile data system now, which only leaves NOCA Ambulance, um, Pseudo City Ambulance, and SABAC Ambulance not on mobile data, which is um, a good accomplishment, making a lot of headway there. And um, worked with Priority Dispatch to keep continuing on with our Pro QA software. Um, we've had a couple follow-ups, follow-up meetings after uh, we go live in October with that. And I continue to spend uh, a lot of time and energy working on that project to get it uh, up and running. So, um, any questions on December or we can move into the year year end? Okay, so uh, 2019 year total had, uh, um, as you'll see, about uh, three to one wireless 911 calls answered versus wireline calls. Um, so that uh, pretty much goes on par with everything that we see throughout the year. Um, our um, emergency calls answered within 10 seconds was uh, 81.46. Uh, as I mentioned, the mean standard is 90% on that. And um, with us being so short staffed most of last year, that's why that number is down from where it should be. But uh, um, since I've been here, we've yet to be around 90%. So this speaks to our. Uh, um, Staffing needs going forward. So, um, request for information 655, as I mentioned, 451 of those were from uh, December alone. We had 204 were from, from uh, January to November. Some projects that we worked on uh, 912, our backup center. We added four radio uh, council positions uh, with redundant functionality so that we actually have backup communications and paging abilities at um, 912, as well as added four new CAD, CAD positions. So our uh, backup site is almost identical to what we have at 911 at this point in time. Uh, we're working on a project right now to finish up uh, a couple phone positions and we'll be in very good shape there, which is a huge improvement from uh, um, where we had been. So uh, radio system. Added some portable radio consoles. Um, we also brought up some fiber connectivity for redundancy between Onondaga and Sioux County, which is a huge thing for us. We've seen, since the radio system has actually been live, we've seen uh, microwave fade between Onondaga and uh, Sioux County, which in the middle of the night, depending on the weather and the atmosphere, uh, we've actually bounced. Our, so our consoles have gone offline overnight intermittently. So it gives our staff a good uh, good practice with their backup systems, but uh, it's ideal to try and keep everything working operationally, you know, the way it's supposed to be, which this fiber is going to do that for us now. So we also negotiated a new maintenance contract with Motorola last year, um, which is a uh, five-year contract going forward, which will help us with our upgrades and, and uh, stuff as we move forward. Training, we did, uh, we hired five people, four people made it completely through our uh, 
uh, recruit training. Um, we had four call takers that were trained over to fire EMS dispatch. And then at, right at the end of the year, we were cross training um, uh, fire EMS dispatchers to uh, uh, city law dispatch. And they're going to be finishing up their training at the end of this month. So um, we added the communications technician position and turned on mobile data for all law enforcement and most of the EMS agencies. The other ones um, I haven't I spoke to that aren't on yet. We are actually currently working on NOCA has started using their mobile data in the past week and should be completely transitioned over by the end of this week. Um, SaveX waiting on a laptop and Oswego City is actually coming on board this morning. So, um, so there's some huge, um, that, that was a huge undertaking getting that mobile data system up and working. First time we've ever had that in this county that law enforcement and EMS are able to remotely see all of our data. So. Also um, deployed our ProQA software, our emergency medical dispatch protocol software, which is a, a huge undertaking as well um, to move us off to off of our card sets and the manual process of answering medical calls to uh, working with the software that uh, drove us to the uh, determinants and stuff. Along with that came a very intensive um, quality assurance program that we continue to work on. That's where we're spending the majority of our follow-up time since that's uh, a lot of that project. Spending a bunch of time working on GIS updates and um, been really struggling in the GIS territory. Um, so, can we bring up some more discussion on that this year? Because uh, now, one next generation it is completely reliant on GIS and we're barely able to keep the streets and new addresses and stuff that are being created in the county up to date in our system, which is an issue because we can't dispatch somebody if there's not an address there. So. <laughs> for the sheriff's office to uh, kick off their records management project. Um, there was a lot of work that uh, we started doing on that, did a lot of training, so um, plan to continue that in, into 2020. And then automatic discovery, we spent a bunch of time working uh, with the sheriff's office, VA's office, and IT to try and figure out how we were going to get over that big giant hill. And we're, uh, we're making good progress. Our uh, data analyst is on board now, and she's doing an awesome job trying to get us up to speed. Um, the biggest thing is we're just, with it being so new to everybody, we don't have a strict process down. So sometimes we get all the information from the ADA, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't get information correctly from the law enforcement agents. It's across the board. So we're, we're all learning to get together on that, and I think we're all sharing the pain from that as we run across stuff that the VA's office needs right now. So. All right, any questions for Kevin? All right, thank you. Moving uh, right along to uh, emergency management staff. Well, yeah, I, uh, I met with the uh, emergency management staff a couple of weeks ago. We went over everything that I need to know and they need to know and, and made sure all the communications and contacts have been updated so that we can continue operating smoothly. Uh, it's great staff. As an example, they prepared this great monthly report for me to give, and I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to hit a couple of uh, highlights that I think the community would be interested in. Uh, the department did uh, meet with the uh, municipalities along the lake shore for an after action uh, meetings on the 2019 lake flooding, uh, talking about what went right, what could be done better and uh, preparing an after action report for that. And I think that's going to be very important since the uh, lake seems to be high already and heading for a, a repeat of uh, last year. Uh, there's going to be two radiological drills this year, a uh, state evaluated one on June 16th, uh, which is why I want to get the director replaced as soon as I can so I don't have to deal with flooding or drills. Um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, and the second one is a federally evaluated drill uh, of our reception center, uh, and that is the, uh, uh, the reception center is at the state fairgrounds. That is where people uh, would be evacuated in the event of a, a nuclear accident that involved a, a release. Uh, so that has to be drilled as well as our own uh, agencies that maybe you're more familiar with at the uh, ESC. Um, our radiological uh, uh, folks uh, did a great job last year. 
of uh, training, uh, trained over 1,000 emergency workers from 35 support organizations in topics such as dosimetry, notification, evacuation, and the use of potassium iodide. It's very important to keep, keep all the uh, emergency responders up to date on those. Uh, and in terms of potassium iodide, our, our supply expires and we are expecting more uh, to be shipped to the county uh, this year. So there will be a uh, distribution uh, program set up to replace everyone's KI. If you don't know what that is, that's the little pill that we're all supposed to have in our refrigerators if you live within uh, 10 miles of the uh, uh, nuclear power plant that you would take in the event of an accident to uh, protect your thyroid. Okay. Did I miss anything that you feel is important? Anybody? On Friday, we did have our first um, lakeshore flooding call with New York State. Um, so just a quick update on that. Um, haven't had a chance to see you yet this morning. So we are starting bi-weekly calls with New York State. Um, all of the counties along the lakeshore join the New York State agencies. They give us updated information. We did post some questions to them that they're going to get some answers for us. And they also told us at NYSEMA coming up in a couple weeks, they have prepared a set of tools for each county that um, takes GIS data and looks at different lake levels. And using those lake levels, you can look at an overlay essentially of what areas in your county would be affected by a lake level of such and such height. So they are going to distribute that. Um, we did ask them if they've looked at any um, modeling similar using wind speeds or um, wave action, but they're not there yet. So that's the majority of our issue is um, the wind and the wave action is where a lot of our, not just the static wave level. But in a couple of weeks, they will be providing us a couple of tools. Especially the location of our mm -hmm. county. So yeah. Uh, Terry or Kathy, do you have anything? <coughs> nope. Legislator Klein? Um, so basically, potassium iodide goes. To be provided by the nuclear plant. Provide. I think they're regulatory. Yeah. They provide them. We don't pay for them. Yeah, because I've never seen it rely on them. Okay. Okay. Anything else? EMS? Uh, a couple of different things. Um, EMS education today is our kickoff for um, a new pilot that we're running in the course. It's an EMT academy. Um, you know, being in the same uh, building as Workforce New York, we see the different posters in our elevator, and one of them said, you know, want to be a carpenter, they're looking to recruit, uh, train, and employ the next generation of carpenters, and this is essentially what this is. Metro Ambulance has employed six individuals, we're running an academy to train them, so, um, you know, they went out and did the recruiting, they're going to pay for the instruction, um, we're acting as the course sponsor. So it's a little bit of a different um, model for EMS education. It's very exciting um, for us and uh, they'll end in, uh, in April and we'll be able to give you a report after that about how this model went. But um, certainly a different way to look at EMS education and our county is certainly going to benefit from having six new providers in the next few months. Um, we're working with the health department um, and looking at Hep A vaccine, vaccines for our first responders, EMS and fire agencies. And then we're also monitoring the coronavirus. Um, just want to put it out there that the CDC does have accurate updates every day. Um, if you wanted any additional information on the coronavirus, I did pull some information from the CDC website um, that you're welcome to take with you, but it is um, a good resource for you to use. And that's all I have. Okay. Wash your hands. There's the best one to mm -hmm. wash your hands. And if you're sick, stay home. One last, this just came up this morning. Um, the state OEM is having a conference call regarding coronavirus today at noon. So we will have one of us on that call. Thank you. Don, you're up. Thank you. Um, basic report, the monthly report, other than the first part, 
Um, we're up over 24 structure fires already this year. And it's just a month into it. We've had four fatalities. Um, a very trying January. Um, we're working on um, public service announcements to get out. Um, working with some of the TV stations to have them not cut out the most important part of the interviews when I mentioned that you need working smoke detectors and clean chimneys and a good way out of the house and that's the part they cut out of the interview because apparently that doesn't sell news. Um, so we're working on that but it's been very busy um, in keeping the Sheriff's Department busy and the DA's office so everybody's been working great together. I hope things settle down. Uh, several course completions. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we did just finish. We had county weekend at the New York State Fire Academy. What that is is um, County Chiefs Association sponsors a training weekend at the State Fire Academy. Um, we had just over 70 people attend, uh, and they, I think they took part in five different classes. Um, so it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We just started a new basic class. Um, started on the 21st and that runs through June and then we actually have a scheduling meeting with the state fire instructors and our state reps tomorrow to schedule up through spring early summer training. Um, everything else is really pretty much self-explanatory. We're working on grants. Um, we are uh, moving forward with the tech rescue grant. Um, we just completed some purchase recs <coughs> and receiving material to keep that moving forward and we'll work on a couple of them. And disappeared. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, basic part of we started, the numbers that are in that, how they were good or it's twenty four. Twenty four and that's I mean, is that that's max we can put in the class. So we actually had a waiting list. Mm -hmm. Um, so with our waiting that we go through and we'll allow like two from each department and then if it doesn't fill up we'll go down through the waiting list and put one more so we sort of try to balance it out. Um, I think we had four or five left on the waiting list so once this one's done if they do just the exterior portion um, it's about uh, two and a half months if they go into the interior part <coughs> Excuse me. Takes roughly five, five and a half months to do a class. So as soon as that one's done, we'll start another one. So we we'll just we we'll do two a year. Last year we did three of the basic classes, and it really put a huge load on our state instructors because um, there's some. We have six state instructors. We have, we have five right now. We have one opening, and some of the nights for the classes it takes three or four um, instructors. So they do two nights a week plus uh, I think four Saturdays um, through the, the length of the class. So that right now, uh, these 24, is that kind of keeping up with our attrition rate? The guys that are leaving the fire service, you know, like a bit of No. I yes and no. I mean, it's, it's good that we're hearing that the numbers are full, the class numbers are full, but is that right? Um, you know? I, it's it's keeping up to an extent. The problem is it's not so much. Um, the, the people leaving that's getting younger people that come into the volunteer fire service, um, which is all the departments are down on the thing. Um, just a few updates, quick updates. Um, since when you started, our numbers actually, I know I keep saying our numbers are well, our numbers are actually picking up a little bit. Um, we had, as of, actually, as of Friday, we've had 28 16-year-olds since it started on October 1st, 2018. Since if the 17-year-old phased in, as of last October, we had seven, so the numbers are picking up a little bit. It seems to be kind of catching on. But, um, any questions for that? <laughs> um, our cognitive behavioral intervention grant was uh, we got renewed for 2020. We're actually going to be running two programs in our jail. We're running, thinking for a change. 
which is an evidence-based program. We're now going to be doing interactive journaling with them too, so um, we'll be able to capture some more inmates than we were doing before with this new program. So we started a group of seven last Monday, so hopefully that'll move along. Um, and I just uh, added bail reform that I was just going to mention. I know we had a lot of talk about pretrial release and bail reform. Our numbers have dropped off some with pretrial. seems like um, they converted some of the pretrial cases we had to ROR. Um, and generally, we're not getting the numbers we were. So it's since obviously bail reform is supposed to be your least restrictive release. And apparently judges are seeing ROR obviously is least restrictive over pretrial. So we're not seeing any pretrial cases we should see See how that goes. I think what's going to happen is eventually it'll cycle around once we, you know, people aren't um, showing up for court. We're probably going to end up going back up at some point, but right now the numbers are dropping. Great. That's awesome. Good. Any questions for me? Do I something? Yeah, I do for the sure. Can we get oh, a yeah. uh, search or message? Yeah. Thank you. Um, you have the year-end report for 2019 in your packets, and I'll just go over some of the highlights. Uh, for the new committee members, Search and Rescue is a uh, volunteer team that is um, works closely with law enforcement and the D.C. and uh, various agencies to help um, locate people who have reported missing. And um, in 2019, we had 40 calls. Out of those, 18 were resolved before the team was actually activated and sent out on the third. And then uh, 22 were activated searches. And um, from those, 16 of those calls were for autistic individuals. Um, the predominant number of our searches are for elderly or autistic individuals, and then also um, lost children. A lot of them take place in. Uh, local recreation and hiking areas or in areas around the person's home um, if, if it's someone that wandered out. This year, <coughs> at the end of this month, we'll start our training academy. Um, we hold a training academy every two years. We have 10 people enrolled so far. Um, about half are from Onondaga and half are from Oswego counties. And we work closely with Onondaga County Pioneer or, um, Wilderness Search and Rescue Team on our training and also on our searches. So that um, academy will run about four months with them having about 90 hours of instruction and that they'll, um, those who successfully complete it will graduate in June. Um, last year we did receive funding from the Oswego County Community Foundation and that grant was used to purchase mapping software and computer equipment for the team to use in the um, equipment trailer that we use on searches. And then we just submitted a grant to the Stewart's Foundation um, last week for some more educational materials and um, some more equipment for to be used in our searches. Uh, we did several presentations last year for Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops in the county to instruct children and their parents on um, things to do if they do get lost in the woods, how to keep themselves safe, and how to make it easier for Keep to find them. And then um, we also have a training scheduled for February 22nd. It's a Saturday at the Oswego Town Fire Department. And um, that is a prolonged wilderness search training. And it will go over equipment and the techniques uh, for people um, out on the wilderness on first aid and um, those kinds of issues. And um, the emergency responders will be receiving an invitation to that. The details will be fully finalized, but um, that's being organized by the search and rescue team. Any questions? I just, I just want to thank her again. I do this every year. I really appreciate what you do for us. It's a, you, you're not going out there in the middle of June when you see this and not biting like that. I understand that. And, and I want to personally thank you for that. Well, thanks. It's definitely a team effort. and. Um, I'll pass that along. It's appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Richard, do you have something? Yeah, sure. How, how many inmates are we housing out, or are we able to keep them all inside right now? No, we haven't been housing out, but we're about half right now, about 75 to 80 inmates. 
Uh, so we, we have plenty of room. I suspect what's going to happen in the next three to four months is all these people that are being issued insurance tickets aren't showing up as we predicted. And uh, we're going to be issuing warrants, and then we'll be out for a second time, putting our staff at risk. Uh, so our population, I, I anticipate, climbing right back up to full capacity or thereabouts. And quite honestly, Legislator Klein, you said, how many are we able to keep in? We can't keep many of them in because of the new battery report. we got to let them all go. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So many questions. Oh, oh, I, once they pick them up on the warrant, we're going to have to release them again? What's the, how's, the law, how's this new law pan out next? I mean, are we just in a circle? I mean, that, that becomes the question as to once they get picked up, the court may have to file a warrant. If it's initially on an appearance ticket and they don't show up, the court's likely going to have to RMR them. If it's something where they've already been arraigned, when they get picked up, we have to demonstrate that it's been a willful and persistent uh, failure to appear. And so the question becomes what's persistent? Common sense. <laughs> Did you not, um, you know, if they miss one appearance, it's not going to be persistent. Two, we were kind of looking at the guidance in other sections. If somebody's a persistent felony offender, is in a two prior felonies, this is the third. So we're probably going to be looking at somebody who missed court at least two to three times. But then we have to show that it was willful and then intentionally. Um, <laughs> and basically, starting January 13th, we started having finished tickets from the cap court, having appearance from um, the kind of hit or miss, depending on some rates we've had. You know, two, three people show up as they're supposed to. Or you know, two or three people supposed to show and nobody show up. Um, and say we're probably adding about 500 right now. Well, I, I would like to say that uh, contrary to all of uh, uh, us who have been very vocal opposing the ballot reform and all the discovery changes and all of that from handed down from the state. I do want to commend our departments uh, who have done an excellent job keeping up with what they have to do and are uh, abiding by the state law. Um, and know that we do support you in all that you're doing, but uh, we don't appreciate the new laws that have been handed down to us. What I can tell you is, I was at the DA conference last week, um, got together with a handful of other DAs, we're basically trying to look for a middle, middle road if we can. Uh, I know the bail reform has been getting a lot of play. Discover reform is really hurting everybody. Um, so I talked to, uh, on the way down to the conference, a gentleman who's with the State Defenders Association, um, you know, from all the other counties, and he even sectors, the 15 day time limits for some reason. He has an offense that we've been talking about here with him. Something that's unachievable. So he and I started talking about some potential numbers. Uh, and I got talking to the DA in Ulster County. Uh, the chief public defenders in Ulster County is out of the State Defenders Association for this year. We we're trying to set the meeting in the next week or so to get together and say what actually makes sense. Um, there's actually some meetings of set great by members of the Bar Association, Public Defenders Office, saying, we're just getting overrun with too much stuff. We can't process it all. So even on the defense side, we're looking for some relief on this. So hopefully we can get some practitioners together. Maybe we can come up with a middle road that makes sense, some time frames that make sense. Not just getting the folks at all ready to listen. But and I have to say, uh, now Minority Leader Barkley has been fantastic. He's reached out to me. He's talked to folks in law enforcement. Uh, to make sure that our voices are being heard on this issue, and really, we're really fortunate to have the Southern Market there and have it be the force. Okay, with that, motion to adjourn. Well, Terry, one thing I just want to bring up uh, I've been in contact with uh, Chair Franz Spike from uh, Yates County about coming up here. He's like the state expert on the slow moving in the vehicle thing, and I, I would encourage anybody on the Public Safety Committee, please attend this when we get it set up because we are going to pass some kind of local legislation that's going to have to go through this committee. And uh, just when I get the date and time set up, please try to attend that presentation. We'll make sure everybody does. Are you going to send it to not just legislators, you send it to us? Oh, it'll, as be, well? it'll be like.
County Alliance. We'll send it to okay. fire to fire service to learn. This is not meant to bring the men and light and or Amish community in. Mm -hmm. It's from the administrative how we address sure. it with them. Mm -hmm. So it's fire departments, EMS, mm -hmm. okay. and to law enforcement and courts legislators. Now, how long of a presentation is it? Uh, about 90 minutes. 90 minutes? We'll probably end up at the dual college. If I can secure a little more there. Okay. <laughs> okay, Richard. Just one more thing, Sheriff. I want to thank you, your, uh, your, your group there, the Sheriff's Association, and their stand on the marijuana uh, issue. I appreciate that. Keep up the good work. That is going to be an expense for this county if that comes about. Okay. Motion to adjourn now. Please go to Greco, second by legislator Klein. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.